All right, uh, good evening, everyone. See a lot of us uh, have joined in, so let me just open the chat window. Um, hello, on. Are you able to hear me, see me type? Great. So maybe we can just start with uh, where <clears throat> you guys are from. So if you can just put in <clears throat> your, uh, the city that you're from, and uh, maybe you can always uh, also give me a trivia detail. Can you tell me, um, can you tell me perhaps uh, another information? Can you tell me uh, which city you're from? I'll just get the PPT up. Yeah. So, oh, great. We have <clears throat> quite a good mix. So, we have people from Kolkata, Bangalore, Jaipur, Mumbai, Hyderabad, um, Barakpur, uh, Manipal, uh, Pune, um, Nasik, Gurgaon, Nagpur, uh, Chennai. Mumbai, Wapi, Gujarat. A um, lot of people from Bangalore, Darjeeling, that's nice. Kolhapur. And then we have, uh, so I'm just gonna be sharing the screen. Just give me a second, I'll just uh, share the screen so that you're able to see that, so. Yeah, so you're able to see the screen now. So <clears throat> let me just go ahead and yeah. So we also have Boston, US, so that's nice. Delhi, um, Cochin, New Jersey, uh, Jaipur. So yeah, so quite a lot of you. <laughs> so nice. Um, so let's get started without much delay. Uh, the title for today's webinar, uh, we'll be spending about 90 minutes discussing on this. I'll spend some time taking you through what these schools really look for. Um, and then we will get on to the next part of it, which is, uh, you know, from a perspective of, you know, your questions, because I feel the next 90 minutes that we're going to spend today, all that we need to do is we need to focus on you know getting this one question answered which is what is it that i can do from now till the point i apply to a b school right what is it that i can possibly do to improve my profile right what is it that i can do to help b schools look at me more pos positively right what is it that i can do that may increase my probability correct so that's what we are really looking at uh, and uh, you know, I'm going to kind of start off by giving, uh, you know, sort of a, a background about what we are in for today. So as I mentioned, uh, what we're going to be focusing on today is we're going to be focusing on these actionable tips. Uh, just to, you know, give you a sense, it's about 7.30 here in India. So we will go all the way till about 9 o'clock. Again, the idea is that in this 90 minutes, I would like you to focus um, because a lot of what I'm going to say uh, will be framework rules, but it's important that you understand how you will be able to apply it in your context, correct? So in your specific context, what is it that you can do to implement this framework, okay? 
just a couple of things about the control okay so just some ground rules um, first ground rule is if you are able to hear me if you are able to, if one person is able to hear me okay i would assume that everyone else can hear correct uh, we got about 100 plus participants so i can i hope that all of you can hear in case you are not able to hear please wait for 30 seconds just check if uh, uh, you know people around you are also having the problem so you know invariably after 30 seconds you can put it on the chat what you also might benefit from doing is logging off and logging back in sometimes it uh, seems to um, you know fix the issue a couple of things over here one is that the chat window i'll be so for example let's take this classic example bhavesh upadhyay says your voice is breaking now anybody else yes 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 asan you are able to hear me clearly right or is it breaking okay so great so if if we got like enough people saying that is breaking that means i'll look into it okay just one second let me just have a just one second let me just quickly check oh that is because okay so that was because i was connected to the wrong internet connection so thanks a lot um for asking that so you are able to hear me now i assume is this fine it's fine now right great so good um just a couple of other things so you see this chat and you see a q and a um in case you have a specific question i'm going to be waiting till the end of the session to answer it so please uh, post your questions uh, in this chat in the q and a uh, and i will be taking it up at the end of the session uh, these are specific questions for example i have a question now i'm going to take this as a first question by the way i'm not going to be uh, taking other questions at this point uh, question was will we get the recording of this session the answer is yes um, after you're done all you need to do is go back and click on the same link and uh, you should be able to get the same uh, you know uh, recording all right uh, there is so you understood the q and a i see that some of you are raising your hands but i'm going to focus on the talking bit for the next some time okay so i'm going to stop at you know at 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 regular intervals and i'm going to ask you uh to you know ask me questions so please keep your questions till then or you can just go ahead and type it in the q and a box but i will not be looking at the chat window unless and until or i'll not be uh, responding to queries in the chat window so i'll be taking it up at specific time slots after i've done uh with certain chunks of uh, information that i have to give you all right so um just very quickly um <clears throat> about about track verbal so um many of you are our students and we love you for that right uh but many of you who don't know crack verbal started in 2006 so just a personal journey so i was in the software industry i was working first as a software engineer then i went on to become a project manager then a delivery manager all in a span of about a decade but what i was really good at was standardized testing and mentoring so that's something that i uh, took up uh, you know uh, in 2006 and that's how really crackable started uh, it's been a long journey i i started doing this full time and sometime in 2011 so 2006 to 2011 was more of a moonlighting uh, journey and uh, yeah so we are here and whatever i speak is from experience uh, whatever i speak is from actually seeing students up uh, to so a lot of times i have students come up to me and say i don't i have this average profile what do i really do to you know kind of get into a top school by the way when i say top school i'm not necessarily talking about harvard business school 
right? Because to be very honest, you know, uh, rather than looking at Harvard Business School or let's say Stanford, it's, it's important to look at, you know, schools that are in the top, right? It could include, let's say, a side business school in Oxford. It could include an ISB in India. It could include uh, perhaps uh, Emory in the US. So we are looking at a top 30, 30 to 50 school, decent schools. How do I get in? How do I actually break in? So whatever I'm going to bring, it's almost like, you know, I like to think of myself as the Harsha Bogle of, uh, you know, um, of, of test prep, right? So most cases, when you see, you know, these commentators sitting in the commentary box, you will realize that you have X text test players and you have uh, people who have hit uh, multiple centuries and have a lot of records to their name. But uh, I bring in a more pedestrian outlook, so to speak, about uh, this whole thing. Because what I feel is if, if you're already, if you're an IIT 9.5 uh, pointer, if you have uh, got into Google, if you have a 780 on the GMAT, really you should not be attending this webinar. Let's be honest, correct? Because uh, that means you pretty much have checked all the tick box, you know, ticked all the check boxes and uh, you're pretty much on your way to getting there. But I think, you know, the question that most people have is, I come from a average engineer, engineering college. Uh, I have average work X, if I could call it, you know, average. Uh, yeah, I have a couple of things in my extracurriculars, but nothing really great to talk about. I'm yet to take the GMAT and I'm looking at this whole journey and people keep talking about how I should have a great profile. So if you are having this question, then this webinar is for you, all right? So um, that's up me on uh, that me up on the top. Um, so that's when I wear a suit. Otherwise, when I wear a t-shirt, I look a little different. <laughs> and we also have a, a panel of mentors. These are from schools, top schools. If you look at it, we have people from JEDGE. We have people from ISB. We have, you know, people from almost all the top schools in the world. And uh, we essentially work as a team. So when application season starts, um, the team basically comes together. I give them like a background on what the application season is going to look like. And, uh, you know, each one is assigned a set of uh, students and they work with the students. And it starts right from story building. Like, you know, what are the stories that we can talk about? Then we get into structuring the stories, you know, how should it flow for the essays? Um, and then we get into the polishing part, right? The language and all of it. So this is just a glimpse of our mentors. We actually have more than 20, 25 mentors, but all of them, you know, uh, they are on my WhatsApp, they are on my speed dial. So, you know, kind of make sure that it's uh, slightly more tight knit. It's actually very hard to become a mentor at Trackable. There is a lot of, uh, you know, hoops that you need to jump before you get here. Right. Um, a couple of important resources. Um, so the first is, uh, so I'm giving off uh, the application Kickstarter course. So the application Kickstarter course, uh, I'll be send, I'll be giving you the link. Uh, so this is essentially, um, you know, a, a course where I'm going to be, uh, it, it actually contains videos where I have taken people through this whole question. Why should I do an MBA? Right. Uh, what are the post MBA career paths that you know, that people typically take up. Is an MBA as an ROI worth it? I'm going to spend perhaps one, two years of my life. I'm going to invest maybe, you know, a crore of it. Is it really worth it? What can MBA really do for me? So I think, you know, very basic things, you know, how to select schools. Everybody has these glossy brochures where they talk about, um, you know, holistic education. How do I really discern, you know, uh, what's a good school for me? So I, I take care of all of it. It's, it's in fact mandatory um, viewing for people who take our admission services. So in case you would like to take this, um, you know, I'm going to give, it's a $69 course, but uh, just for today, I'm giving it at a uh, dollar. So uh, go ahead and use this link. I'm going to paste this link in the chat window. So in case you're worrying about copying it, don't worry. So you got the, yeah, you got the, so this is the link. So go ahead and click on that link. Uh, don't worry about buying it now. Don't worry. We got time. Okay. But uh, that's, that's one course that I would really recommend uh, that you should be taking up. All right. Um, 
here's another thing uh, our youtube channel so there are a lot of videos where i uh, you know kind of give a lot of free advice on mba and applications in general so strongly recommend you go over to the videos in fact last year one of the projects that we did was we took up you know almost all the top 20 30 schools in the world and we analyzed each and every mba essay correct uh, so that was uh, very well received so uh, a lot of resources there uh, please make sure that you go ahead and uh, you know, uh, go through that in your leisure time. One more resource uh, is the ebook library. So we have ebooks right from how to finance your MBA. You can see that, right? So how to finance your MBA, how to select the right B school, how to build the perfect application, writing SOP. So we got a bunch of ebooks. So you might want to have a look at uh, and that. So all of this would be at applications.trackable.com, right? So you just need to go ahead and uh, uh, give the link over there. Uh, uh, right now, what you can do is you can also go ahead and uh, get your free, um, you know, MBA profile report. I think some of you might have already done that. So it generates a PDF and uh, along with the PDF, you can schedule a call with someone in my team and uh, one of the admissions experts can take you through your profile and uh, actually help you answer a few questions uh, that, you know, that you may have. All right. Okay, so without much ado, let's get on to the main question that we have today, which is how to improve your profile for an MBA, right? First things first, what is the application reader looking for, right? So what is it that really uh, a B school, you know, really wants, okay? Now, I'm going to teach you uh, a little bit of... Uh, 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 this is this is something that you know probably you'll learn more in uh, critical reasoning so let me teach you some critical reasoning to begin with okay so it's a very interesting relationship between um let me just use a black one <clears throat> between mba and success right so what people usually think is MBA, having an MBA makes you successful, right? This is the biggest myth, right? You need to first get rid of this myth. MBA is not going to take a coal and make it into a diamond, right? MBA programs are not meant for that. MBA is not going to make you successful. Instead, the way to look at it is, successful people end up doing an MBA, right? So think of it this way, um, you know, you may drive a fancy luxury car, okay? And people who drive fancy luxury cars are rich, but that's not the logic. Rich people <laughs> drive fancy luxury cars. So what really it means is, if you are a person who's gonna succeed no matter what, a B school is really looking for you, trying to put a stamp on you, correct? So they're just picking you and saying, you know what? I'm gonna put a stamp on this person. I'm gonna say ISB class of 2019. You know what? Because this guy is gonna succeed irrespective of an MBA. 20 years down this line, when this person becomes super successful, people are gonna ask, hey, what did he do to actually become so successful? Then they will look at all the things and they say, hmm, he went to ISB, maybe ISB is the reason he was successful. Okay. And that's what B schools really look for. B schools look for what is going to make you successful. Is this person the next Steve Jobs? Okay. Maybe Steve Jobs is too much of a stretch, but I don't know. Maybe you're the next uh, Bhavish Agarwal, right? Or maybe you're the next uh, Sachin Bansal. Maybe you're the next uh, whoever else you want to be, correct? But that's what B schools are looking for. So what you need to impress to the B school is, hey, I'm going to be successful in life, okay? I'm to piggyback on me, okay? And essentially, you know, end up, uh, uh, you know, using my success, okay? <laughs> to, uh, you know, really leverage your brand, correct? Now, in this whole thing, if you realize, how do I really know whether a person is going to be successful 10 years, 15 years, 20 years down the line? It's an art, it's not a science, correct? Nobody could have predicted, right, that, uh, you know, uh, someone like, 
you know, many of the college dropouts who end up uh, becoming successful, nobody can really predict, right? So what these schools decided, they all sat one day, okay, and they had perhaps lots to drink, right? I'm just making it up, okay, so don't take it seriously. So they probably drank and they said, well, what are the things that we should look and, you know, uh, come with this magical formula that will help us know whether a person is successful or not? And for better or for worse, these are the five things that they picked. Okay. Now, again, am I, you know, am I saying these are the, these should be the five things? I'm not saying that, but they decided that the five things that is going to really, um, you know, tell us whether you're successful or not are going to be these five things. So let's look at it. So the first thing they're looking at is your academic potential, right? Okay. And I'm going to get into in detail, but two years or one year of a B school is a very, very intense, rigorous process. Okay. Last thing that they want is they want a guy to join, right? And realize maybe a couple of months into it that he really cannot hack the course. He cannot really, you know, kind of complete the course. Then what is going to happen is, see, remember B schools have only limited number of seats every year right? They are trying to build their own legacy. They are making sure that, you know, all the 900 people at Harvard, they really want all those 900 people to become CEOs or movers and shakers, correct? So if let's say 10% of the class drops off, let's say 90%, 90 students drop off, that is 90 fewer people carrying the badge of Indian School of Business or Harvard Business School, which in turn, you know, also impact them in another way that these 90 people are going to go out there and say, Hey man, this school, whatever it advertises, I spent like three months. I paid through my nose, you know, first year non-refundable fees. And, you know, I just, I just, you know, was disappointed with it. Nobody's going to say that I dropped out of the course because I wasn't able to hack it. So what these schools are very, very, very uh, you know, interested to know is, is this person someone who can manage the pressure of, um, you know, of an MBA program, correct? Which is why, you know, as we will see GMAT scores and all that become important because if you're not able to get above a particular score on the GMAT, it's going to be very hard for you in B school, right? Um, let's take the next one. They look at quality of experience, right? Now, to a large extent, okay, this whole thing, you know, this whole MBA thing, it, it, it works like a pedigree system, you know? Um, you might have heard of this ISI mark or for agricultural products, they have this egg mark, right? A lot of B-School admission process works like this, right? So what I'm doing is I'm qualifying a person, okay, through various stages, okay? So I'm qualifying through various stages and I'm trying to see if my final product can be risk-free, okay? So the final product is risk-free. So when an employer comes, okay, when an employer comes, I can present this risk-free employee to him, okay? Now, what do you mean by risk-free? Let me just give you an example. So let's say this guy went to IIT. Let's say he, uh, you know, ended up working for Google, okay? And uh, let us say he now has an MBA from ISB. Again, I'm picking ISB, but really it could be any good school, right? Now, what are the chances that a guy who goes to IIT turns out to be a rotten apple? Not very likely, correct? But yeah, there are usually these 10, 20% in any college that could, you know, not be great. But what are the chances that a guy went to IIT and then joined Google? What are the chances that you could go wrong with them? Not much, correct? But maybe, maybe there is just this 2% chance that, you know, it could go wrong. What are the chances you could go wrong with a guy who went to IIT, went to Google, and then joined ISD, correct? You pretty much have, you know, unless and until he, uh, you know, something goes, like he goes batshit crazy or something, chances that, you know, you're going to have a risk with this guy is very minimal. So really, when a Mackenzie comes to campus, what Mackenzie says that, look, I'm going to pay him, you know, like a truckload of money, right? I'm going to invest in training this guy. I really hope this guy sticks on and, you know, is able to perform well. Now, in an interview, I just have like one hour, correct? So I really cannot figure out in an hour whether this guy is going to perform. 
So what I want to make sure is that he has the pedigree. I'm going to use this word. I know it's used for, you know, canines more than humans, but really, right? So in some sense, that's where an employee coming in. So if you did not have this, you did not have this, at least having an ISB degree can qualify you to being relatively less risk free. Correct. So work experience also works very similar. Okay. So they want to make sure that you contribute. Okay. Third thing, leadership and diversity. Now, this is very important. See, if they really wanted this guy with whatever, you know, GMAT course and, you know, his, his, his pedigree, what usually is a, is a, a indicator of success is someone who's high energy. Right. Someone who says, look, I don't just go to office and come back in the evening and binge watch Netflix and drink beer and just go to bed. Right. I want someone who has the energy, enthusiasm, positivity to do something, who is able to bring something to the table um, among the 900 students that, you know, kind of adds value to the whole class. Correct. Think of it this way. You probably have met these overachievers, right? The alpha males, right? The 800 pound gorillas who have probably done nothing wrong in their lives. But the thing is, they are people who probably are just so unidimensional. They may be great technically, but they have really not done much otherwise, correct? So ISB or any B school would say, can I see a spark of leadership in this guy, correct? Fourth thing, personality, right? All things being equal, you need someone in B school who has high EQ, right? EQ stands for emotional quotient, right? You don't want this jerk, right? Who just spends one year in a B school, thinks he's God, right? Or here is another example. You get someone to a B school who perhaps cannot communicate well, right? Who, who probably doesn't have the empathy right who probably lacks the teamwork so what happens you're put into a team with this guy and uh, he just doesn't pull his weight correct so they're also looking for personality they're also looking at you know uh, how you are able to communicate your thoughts how the, you are self-aware correct and finally they are looking at people who have goal clarity they have realized that people who do well in life are people who are very clear about what they want to achieve Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to take out a couple of minutes, maybe a minute or so, and I want you to write down, maybe you have a piece of paper somewhere. I want you to write down, okay, um, these five things, you know, academics, work X, leadership, personality, goal clarity. And be honest, just give yourself a score, uh, maybe on a scale of one to 10. What do you think is a one? What do you think is a 10? Is, is something that I would leave up to your judgment, correct? So for someone a six and for another one an eight could mean the same thing, but really that's it's not eight the o'clock. Okay. The point is just think about it. Okay. And then we will get into uh, the specifics, but right now just, you know, have a look at it. Uh, by the way, uh, I think uh, many of you are raising your hand. So very honestly, I'm sorry about it, but I wouldn't know what to do. Okay. So instead of raising your hand, um, if you have a specific question, please uh, post it in this Q&A box. So you have an option for Q&A. So go ahead and uh, post it there. Otherwise, I wouldn't know what to do. Okay. So as I was saying, right, um, the important thing is, MBA programs don't make people successful rather than that. Think of it this way. Successful people make MBA programs look great. So what we are really, um, you know, establishing here is you need to figure out how do you need to tell the B school that, hey, even without your program, I'm going to be successful. Okay. And these are the five things and uh, just need to look at each one of these. So leadership slash diversity, what I meant was something that you did which was different from others, correct? So it could be either leadership or it could be even the fact that, you know, uh, a certain diversity about you in what you do.
Okay, so um, I'm just going to the questions now. Uh, Shodan, um, my recommendation is you perhaps would be better off uh, posting this to someone at Crackfable. So uh, I'll just give you the, so let me just uh, go ahead. So any questions that you have, uh, please feel free to um, mail it to um, info at crackfable.com and we will route it or let me just give you another email address let me just give it to so you can mail it to essays at Okay, so go ahead. If you have uh, any questions specific, if you are a crackable student, you can go ahead and do it. Because show them really, this is not the topic we are looking at. Whether you should go for MIM or MBA is something that is very specific to you. So my recommendation is to uh, probably mail and uh, check, but uh, that is not covered in the scope of this webinar. Okay. Uh, would application reader, uh, Pavan Kumar Bachchu had this question, would an application reader look for same points in case of part-time MBA? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, pretty much even a part-time MBA, um, it is going to be very similar. Uh, Devraj, you had this question, what do you mean by diversity? So when I say leadership, um, so let's say I uh, uh, ended up working with someone who, uh, you know, had this, uh, you know, he worked with spastic children. Um, so he had a you know, a cousin who was a spastic and that got his interest. So he took an initiative. He did something different, correct? Um, so it could be a variety of different cases. I'll look at it when I come to it. So this slide is not the slide. I'm going to specifically talk about diversity a little later. Okay. Um, yeah. Pavanpreet, we'll talk about it when I talk about diversity. Yeah. So maybe, correct? We'll talk about it, right? Okay, so let me just go on. Uh, let me get started with the first thing, academic potential, correct? What do they mean by academic potential? What do they look for? So number one, they look for your undergrad institute, okay? So if you look at it, uh, you know, uh, the more difficult it is to get into that particular institute, the higher reputation that institute enjoys. Needless to say, in a place like uh, India, IITs are coveted, they are up there, correct? So uh, that might be, you know, this, you have NITs. But see, it is not just IITs and NITs, right? I have had people get into good schools, decent schools from, you know, very no-name colleges also, right? But definitely that is seen. What is more important is they also look at how you perform. Correct. So I would rather be in an average institute and get a gold medal rather than be in a top institute and end up with, you know, in the bottom of the class. Correct. So much so that they actually even see your transcripts. They actually see how much you scored in each of the subjects. They want to see whether you are able to handle certain quantitative courses better. Right? What was your scores in operation research? So they are actually going to put a magnifying glass and they're going to be looking at all of this. Right? Again, why? Because they feel that a person who is focused, driven is a person who will succeed. And a person who's focused and driven is a person who ends up doing well in academics. Now that's what they think. I'm sure you have questions right now. I know exactly what your questions are. Okay. And I'm going to answer it very shortly. Your GMAT scores, okay, of course, what I did when I was in college, I mean, don't even ask me if I were to talk about myself, I'm embarrassed to <laughs> admit most things that I did when I was in college because, hey, you know, cut me some slack. I was 17 when I got into college, right? You know, a 19 year old brain doesn't really think, um, you know, academics or studying is that important. So if you feel that you really did not kick ass when you were an undergrad, GMAT is the place where you can really prove your worth, right? Get an obscenely high GMAT score, right? And it will more than compensate for undergrad. Like not more than compensate, but yeah, it would compensate to some extent for your undergrad, okay? Um, any patents, any research work you have done, 
again what does it tell me it tells me by the way i am not looking at questions in the um, in the chat window so i want you to put it in the q and a box uh, if you put it in the q and a box i will look at it but not in the chat window right any patents or research work right anything that you have done um, any accomplishments because that also tells me that look maybe when he was in college he wasn't that attentive but once he started working once he had the focus once he had the um, you know the, the the goal the motive he started performing well correct um, you could also look at any advanced degrees did he end up doing a masters did he do a part time program did he take up any certifications correct all of these will also end up counting towards your overall academic profile correct see remember it's not just one part right it's a mix of these parts what they are really doing is they are really figuring out can this person handle the academic rigor of a b school that's that's the only thing they are looking at and if you think about it at this point really what are the things that you can really change right you can't really change your undergrad you can't change you know you can't really do a patent in the next 3 months let's be realistic the only two places you can change maybe your gmat scores correct that's something on which you have control and any advanced degrees or certifications right so you have a chance to take up some certifications take up something which will tell them that yes this person may be interested in you know uh, this particular thing correct so that's really um, you know the long and short of it correct um, now one point on gmat scores this is something that i have heard students uh, talk about and say they say arun i heard profile is important can i get into harvard with 650 but a great profile well unless and until um you are a legacy candidate legacy candidate means someone who's you are the fifth generation to attend harvard there are people like that okay don't be surprised there are people who say you know what you know from 1893 there has been someone in my family going to harvard right this, this is you know uh, what is typically there is a term for it okay um, and even in b school so you probably might term it's called wasp okay uh, stands for white anglo saxon protestant these are people who came in the plymouth right they 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 are really the founding fathers of the united states they are born into privileged families correct um, again it's not just us it also for example let's say um, what's uh, what's his name akash ambani right you heard his speech very inspiring <laughs> so akash ambani right do you think he goes to b school he needs to worry he just goes to apply to harvard he'll get in man he'll get in with a 550 gmat right so unless and until you are in that privileged elite category please do not tell me you got an extraordinary profile no you don't okay you can be the greatest gift to you know uh, to mankind but unfortunately b schools want your gmat scores so if there is one thing that you can really change it's your gmat scores make sure that you get a kick ass gmat score trust me it will do a lot to your confidence you know when you get that 730 sam 40 kind of score it, it really boosts your confidence otherwise what happens when you are applying with a 650 you are already on your back foot and trust me a top 30 school in the us 650 is going to be really tough okay and i say that from experience people say but you know what is this whole thing about profile well profile comes after the gmat score see gmat score is your is the chalky that are sitting outside the gate okay so this is the gmat score is the chalky that are sitting outside this is the mb admissions office okay think of it this way so what happens is before you even get into the mba admissions office you have to pass the gate right and this chokidar is going to make sure that you are not going to get in if you don't have a high enough gmat score correct so really you may have the, you know i have a great profile you have great essays you know what they probably are not going to even read your essays i know it sounds horrible right but they are not going to read your essays stanford this year had an average gmat score of 740 just digest that 740 that's that's obscene that's an average gmat score right they routinely have people applying with 
perfect GMAT scores. They have routinely people applying with 790, 800. So GMAT score is a uh, is, uh, input. It's, it's one of those hygiene factors, right? But yeah, that's really, I want to make sure that I emphasize this as much as possible in today's webinar because you have another six months in case you have taken the GMAT and you're really looking at your score and wondering, hmm, is that something that I can do over there? Well, if you feel you can improve, please go ahead. That 20, 30 point improvement will help you. And in case you're not taking the GMAT and you're thinking, well, let me just get a 700. Let's, let's put it this way. Um, you know, if you look at uh, cricket, okay. Um, I, I, I love, you know, watching cricket and way back, you know, in the nineties when, you know, Tendulkar was, was at his peak and, you know, those days, 250 was considered a decent score and 300 was considered a winning score. You know, a team hitting 300 in ODIs typically won the match. But cut to 2018. Today, after this world of T20s, 300 is not a defensible score anywhere. In fact, 300 has become the hygiene factor. Correct? Same thing for B schools. Right? It's, it's really no different over there. Okay. Uh, just quick question to everyone. Is my sound still breaking? I just looked at the chat window right now. Is my sound, is my voice breaking? Not my sound, but voice. Okay. So if uh, a few of you are able to hear me clearly, then I'm going to not uh, look at it. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead. Okay. So that's what I have to say about academic uh, potential. Let me go ahead and answer. There are a bunch of questions. Um, how many years of work experience is recommended? Can we get to the point? I will answer those questions at that point. So I'm going to hold on. I'm going to answer that. I'm going to answer only questions based on uh, academic potential. Okay. Rest of the questions, I'm going to go back and answer it later. Does school statistic matter as much as college stats? Because a student with 80% of school might be doing better in college. Simran, fortunately, unfortunately, 10th and 12th don't matter that much. Okay. I know that some of the Indian schools require you to input your 10th and 12th standard marks, but I've spoken to people at admissions at various schools. I am Bangalore, I am Ahmedabad, ISB. They don't look at it you know, seriously. But yeah, if you got like state rank topper or something, yes, that's a positive, but they don't really bother too much about your school academics. Okay. Um, one more question that we have uh, is uh, from Ashish. Uh, so Ashish, I hope uh, you got the response to the email you had written to me. I remember your name. Um, as an alumni of NIT Kurkela, is that point increase my chances? I didn't get the question. Sorry about it, Ashish. You need to retype it. Can you just ask a very specific question, right? So that way I'll be able to help you. Um, Sunil, PGPM, what do you suggest? Uh, not in the scope of this webinar. So just to make sure that you understand, please put yourself in my situation. There are 100 plus people wanting to this. So I want to make sure that I uh, answer the relevant questions. I cannot do a profile evaluation at this point, right? So the moment I see something, I'm a software engineer, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to be able to answer it, right? Great question, Kaushik Majumdar. What is undergraduate CGPA? Thanks for asking me that. Um, CGPA, okay. Uh, or I'm just going to go and tell you uh, the various uh, formats that we have. So some schools look at GPA, a four point system. Some schools have a 10 point systems. There is one school I think which has a five point system also. There is CGPA, which is nothing but cumulative grade point average. So this stands for grade point average okay then you have percentages a lot of schools have plus i had percentages when i was graduating i don't know how much things have changed but i used to have percentages like you got 65 percent 75 percent things like that um apart from that you also have um you know what is known as relative grading correct so the topper is taken as uh, 10 and then you know Everyone else has taken relative to that. Whatever your undergrad reporting system, don't worry. I've used GPA just because in the US, none of this, like there is just one standard scale. It's sort of four. You don't need to worry about it. You don't need to worry about converting it. 
if you are in the top 25% of your graduating class, okay, that is enough. I think that's a, you know, a, a, a good enough measure to know that you actually did uh, fairly well, correct, in undergrad. So uh, CGPA is grade point average and uh, GPA is grade point average. Okay, it's a US term. Um, let me get back. <clears throat> okay. Um, okay. So, uh, Saurabh had a question in CA. GPS don't generally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. See, Saurabh, I'll tell you the other thing. Even within India, right? You go to Tamil Nadu, I think 95% is like considered average or you know, considered on par, correct? Whereas I, I graduated from, um, you know, Gujarat, right? So in Gujarat University, in Maharashtra University, 75% is considered, you know, like, yeah, as you said, the topper gets 75%. I got 60% here in my graduation, which wasn't that bad. So don't worry, these schools, they actually spend a lot of money. See, think about it. Uh, they are getting one crore from every student, okay? Every year they have about 40, 50 Indians, that means 50 crores they have getting from Indians, they will do that, they will do your do the due diligence. So they have companies that work on their behalf, which will actually go to your college and do all that research. So don't worry about it. I have a research paper in image processing. Sure, Venkata, so that will also help. Definitely. Why not? Um so blah 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 took GMAT first yeah, Surya, I'm going to be answering that question. Okay, so don't worry. I'll be looking at it. And uh, that's a question that you need to uh, Shishank, uh, give some examples of certification. Courses. Great question. What are certification courses? It could be something from MOOCs, correct? Um, so it could be from Coursera, it could be from HBX, right? Um, it could be a certification, it could be a PMP certification, right? Um, any certification for which you need to study, it cannot be a certification which uh, you can get by just you know enrolling for something or by paying money it has to have some intrinsic effort okay so online certifications so roshan i don't know what is your background what is your profile correct so based on your profile your background i would like to pick something that is more aligned so let me just take a minute to answer this because i think you know many of you are probably thinking is there a course or something that i can do See, think of it this way. Let's say today you're working in, uh, let's say, technology, correct? You say that my goal is to do a, is to become a product manager, right? So that becomes your goal. I want to be a product manager, um, you know, at Google, right? Again, I'm picking Google. It could be any other top company, right? So you're saying, hey, you know what? I'm a technology guy aiming to be a product manager. Sorry, my circle wasn't really well formed. Okay. Um, but this is really my goal. And I hope to do an MBA. Okay. To really get there. Would you think doing a product management certification from, I'm just saying, you know, from Stanford. Okay. As through, let's say Coursera. Would this make sense? Sure, right? Because it just makes sense, you know, you want to be that and you want to learn more about it. So pick something that is aligned to your goals. Yeah, you can also learn something just for your own sake. You can take a course in psychology or something, but as long as you're able to justify. So for example, you want to be in marketing, then you can always say that, hey, I'm doing psychology because eventually what does marketing? Marketing is in understanding human psychology. Right. So as long as you're able to justify whatever you're doing towards your long term goal, you don't need to worry. OK. Um, what do I do? If I have an MBA already. Well, don't worry if you already have an MBA, you need to basically tell them that I'm trying to retool myself. OK, so I'm trying to retool myself. The MBA that I did was straight out of college. I had no clue what I wanted in life. I basically wanted a job. But really, once I started working, that's when I started exploring the world of business. That's when I started realizing what I really wanted to do. And that's when an MBA, you know, occurred to me, an international MBA or a top MBA occurred to me. Will they consider ISO auditor? Sure. 
no 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 every every even work related professional uh, experience certification is good financial certification cfa frm definitely why not okay diploma per be no problem okay you took a different route to eventually get there but that's not a problem uh what is the problem at 8.4 i don't think there is a problem with 8.4 i mean could be a problem get a better gmat score right uh Amit, this is not a question that we're going to be answering over here. Um, age being a challenge, but just to kind of let you know, I just had a student who was 41 who got into I am Ahmedabad PGPX this year, last year. Okay, so I don't think age is really a problem. Uh, I've already said that, Sumit. So I think I've answered that question. Um, I'm a gold medalist from an average. I had backlogs in engineering. I'm a good medalist or a gold medalist. I don't know. It says good medalist. I don't know what you mean by a good medalist. So. Uh, I'm just going to, uh, don't worry about backlog. See, you got a backlog, what you did when you were in college, right? Uh, nobody is going to really go back and look at it, right? Forget about it. Work on what you can. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, NIFT is lower than IIT. Let's not kid ourselves over here. But NIFT is considered a good school. But yeah, definitely below IITs. But then NIFT is in a different category. IIT is in a different category. How does it matter? NIFT is a good school. Don't worry. Uh, no, they don't really look at difference between IT, mechanical and all that. So don't need to worry about that. Can you apply for an MBA top school if you already done an MBA? I just answered it. So you can. The answer is yes. Uh, already asked CFA, FRM. How will submit relative document for top 25? Ha, Devraj, you can't really do that. But they will understand. Once you give them this, say that I am from Suhansu University and this is my percentage, they will figure out what what you know what class rank you had so don't worry uh, again kaushik let's not get into age and all that i'm not going to be answering can you please keep the questions only related so i'm going to stop taking questions at this point okay because it's going to be very hard for me to complete it okay because i see people asking the same questions cfa frm i got this question almost four times five times right so yes it helps any certifications i have already suggested okay um Masters over MBA, Natisha, this is not the point I'm, um, I'm basically focusing only on academics. Let me just quickly go through. Uh, is there any other? Uh, I'm going to skip the questions. I'm sorry. But um, I, I really wish I, I, I'm able to answer your questions. But you understand what is happening here. This is not a one on one session. I wish I could give you specific answers. But let's just stay on track, please. And let's just try to go through it. I'll come back to the questions, OK? I'll come back to the questions, specific questions about your profile, not within the scope of today's webinar. OK? Um, so that's unfortunately the case. OK? Let's get to the second part, work experience. First thing they're going to look at is your career progression and performance so far. Right? You know, this guy has been working for three years, five years. I know what typically happens to people after three years, five years, has he taken extra initiative, right? If you get titular promotions, excellent. But if not, has this person shown initiative? Has he taken, you know, cross-functional experience? Did he go and help out the sales team? Did he, you know, maybe develop POC for them? Or did he, you know, do something over and above what you're supposed to do? right is there anything that i can look at and say well this is not something that i would expect someone from with let's say three or four years experience or two years experience something that tells me that you have moved faster than your peers correct i have mentioned this earlier i don't think i need to emphasize this pedigree of your employer why again this whole branding thing you know that because you have a pedigree I can automatically assume certain things about you. Let us say that you were to talk to this guy working in Deloitte in Uganda, correct? I'm just picking this name of the country, but let's say Uganda. So you don't know much about Uganda, but you look at it and say, well, this guy is working for Deloitte. I would assume that he knows something about you know, business processes. I would imagine that he communicates in English and, uh, you know, how he, you know, responds to emails and this. So there are certain things that I automatically assume when I look at your employer, correct? So that's really where the pedigree matters. Is bigger company always better? Not necessary. Though I mentioned that pedigree is important. That is not the be all end all. 
I can work for a smaller company. I can work for a company where I get a lot more exposure. I get to do a lot more. Uh, you know, that's definitely taken as a positive. So it is not that, oh, it's, it's like, if I don't have a big name on my resume, it's going to spell the death knell. In fact, some of the people that I've got, um, you know, they, are, they have done very interesting work, you know, very, very interesting work in very small, you know, uh, micro niches, you know. Uh, you know, there are people who have worked in things like microfinancing, correct? There are people who have worked in architectural firms, architectural firms of, you know, just seven or eight people, right? But they really did some interesting work. They did business development, they did design, they did client servicing, they did a bunch of things, correct? So that definitely will play an important role. What was your roles and responsibility, right? So end of the day, you also have this other thing, correct? By the way, uh, people asking questions in the chat window, um, please, I don't know if you joined in late, but please post it in Q&A. Uh, I will try to see if I can help answer the questions, okay? I'm not sure uh, I'll be able to do if it's very specific to you, but I'll try doing that. Your roles and responsibilities. So what we are really looking at is, what does this person bring to the table? When there is a discussion, when there is a case study being discussed in a B school, let's say you're sitting in this amphitheater and you're surrounded by 60, 80, 100 of the best minds, correct? What in your work experience would help you contribute to the class, right? What is it that you would say? which would make people turn up and say, hey, this guy has got an interesting perspective because he worked in that sector, correct? For example, I'll just give an example. Uh, I know that uh, there was someone who was, uh, um, are all of you able to hear me? If you're able to hear me, then, uh, okay, so you're able to hear me, right? So I'm gonna continue. So uh, there was this person who actually worked for, uh, you know, he was one of the earliest, uh, uh, you know, team members at uh, Mintra. So he actually saw Mintra grow from literally a storehouse and a bunch of employees to, you know, finally getting uh, acquired by Flipkart. So, you know, when someone comes with those kind of stories, you know, the stories that are in the trenches, you know, people who have actually been in the battlefield, people who have had a ringside view of things, you know, that obviously is going to help. So I'm going to be interested to know what did you actually do? And, uh, you know, one key thing that people tend to uh, forget over here is, uh, you know, it's not the number of years, right? I've had, so number of years, you don't need to worry. What you need to worry about is the quality. So I would any day rate quality more than quantity, right? So a person who has three years experience and a person who has seven years experience, the guy with seven years experience has more, uh, you know, proving to do. The guy who has done three years, he at least has this option of saying that, look, take me on my potential. But the guy who's already spent seven years, what would he say? Correct? So don't worry whether you have two years experience, you have 20 years experience, B-School is the place for you. If you have decided, you just need to convince them. Correct? So you just need to make sure you convince them and that's pretty much. Correct? Okay. Um, one year experience too low. No, it is not too low. Um, how relevant are the length of the UG? No, you don't need to worry about it at this point. Let me just go back. Uh, so I have a request. Can you, uh, I already have 22 open questions. I would recommend that, you know, if you could just stop, okay? Uh, because really I would not be able to answer any of your questions, okay? So please do not ask me any more questions. Let me go through this list and let's make sure that we can have, go to the next section um, and I'll give you opportunity to ask but let's just hold it because once this 24 becomes 50 or 60, it becomes impossible. It will mean that I'll end up spending the rest of the time just answering questions, right? And we are just at point number two. Remember, you have a lot more value to get from me from making me go through point number three, point number four, and point number five, okay? So that's why I uh, request that you just stop asking questions at this point. Uh, publish articles help me. Yeah, sure. That's an obvious question. Yeah, sure. Can applying this... Yeah, I already answered this. Research study. Yeah, sure. Why not? Internship certificate. Yeah, sure. 720, a good score. Depends, man. You know, 
it's too broad a question. I won't be able to answer it. Uh, Aishwarya Sharma had this question. When you say research paper, it will be related to one's undergrad. Will that? Not really. It can be related to work also. Maybe you did your undergrad in uh, marketing, uh, in, uh, in mechanical, and you did your uh, experience in computers, and your patent is for computers. So that's not a problem. Certification, absolutely. Pratima, if you understood what I just said, uh, it's an overall profile that you're building. Correct. So if you feel that you got a 800, like you got a great gym match score uh, and your undergrad is great, you don't need to uh, stretch yourself too much on this, which is why I asked you to do that exercise. Right. I asked you to write down uh, on these five parameters. What are the parameters? You know, what do you think you're scoring? So just try to work on the ones where you personally feel that you need to work on. If you feel academic potential is not a problem, then why worry? Joel, one year experience at this point, but by the time you join school, it will become two years. So it will count. Don't worry. Uh, 2.9, I really don't know. Looks like a little low GPA. The only way you can do it is get a higher GMAT score. Correct? That's really the only shot you have. Does 100% score in higher secondary maths? Kind of. But then you are a 17-year-old kid who probably went to coaching classes. How does that tell me about your leadership potential? Probably not, right? So yeah, it would help, but not to a large extent. A lot of state, uh, you know, this and a lot of people in CBSE are getting 100%. So it's not a big deal. Anonymous attendee, 53% BCom, Delhi University. What do I do? Big problem. Get a higher GMAT score. Really kill it in the applications and the essays. Correct? That's the only thing you have. As I said, you can't really do anything about your undergrad. Okay? So the only thing that you have is, you know, make sure that you focus on uh, doing this. One thing that I'm noticing is people are asking the same questions just because I'm not answered it. Okay. Um, and also see questions like this. What about people with 12 years experience? You need to ask me a question. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm just going to pick the questions that I think I would be answering. I'm going to knock off the ones. Okay, so there is this question about work experience. Uh, do B schools look for uh, young, grad, fresh graduates? Can I apply to a B school without work ex? Sure, you can apply without work experience. In fact, ISB has this option called early entry option. Okay, so what I what you can do is just check this. Okay, it's called uh, ISB. Just Google for it. E E O. So if you are actually less than two years experience, you can apply to ISB. They will give you a conditional um, offer. Okay. So that's that. Okay. So let me just go back. Yeah. So Sarvana, I don't know what you mean by people with 12 years experience. Um, I wouldn't know whether GP of six is good. See, again, I want you to see you're applying to a B school, right? So I expect that you have a little sense of things. Um, I wouldn't know whether a 65% is good or bad. Okay. I have no clue, right? Uh, you ask yourself that question, correct? And don't expect this answer from anyone. If Arun doesn't have this answer, trust me, very few people will... I would say nobody else would have this answer. Correct. So, you know, whether a particular, you know, percentage is good or bad, you know, what are your chances? This is, this is really, you know, something that is very subjective. Correct. So use your own independent assessment. Don't externalize the problem, right? Uh, people with vested interest will come and tell you, Hey, apply to the school. Correct. Uh, use your judgment. Look at the average experience for that school. Look at the average GMAT for that school. Correct. Look at the kind of profiles on LinkedIn. See what their background has been. Talk to a few people. Correct. You yourself will get a sense of whether that school is good enough or not. Correct. Um, so I'm just going to go through this. Just kind of clicking on it and typing is like this. I will not be able to get into specific questions, right? Uh, about your profile. Non-profit experience does count. Three years versus four years, don't worry too much. Uh, leadership development program in your organization, unfortunately, is not pedigree. 
they have to do it sunil because you are already employed with them shift in experience amit question of good question um shift in experience how is it looked at by the adcom uh, you worked in bpo for 7 months my recommendation please don't throw it in your experience anything that you have done for you know 6 months or so don't throw it in your experience it just shows a very fractured resume correct um professor in engineering college for 2 years technical consultant in mnc for 6 years perfect just show that tell them that you know while i was a professor in engineering college i actually you know uh, delved deep into my uh, skills and i realized that i was actually good at it which is why i you know maybe i thought i loved teaching but after 2 years i really uh, realized that i loved solving problems which is why i went on to become uh, you know a technical consultant so any story in the world can be worked out correct so the whole idea is it can be worked out right so don't worry startup experience not a problem but the only thing with startup experience is you know don't say that i work for a startup it does not have website okay i have had people do this okay no website uh no company incorporation but two years you claim you are working in a startup well unfortunately that will go against you correct um sorry man too many questions so i'm not going to be able to take any more questions uh let me kind of go through the you know rest of the webinar so that i can hopefully add more value over that okay and again i am just requesting uh, i i will not be able to answer specific questions uh, please stick to questions which are related to this about work experience all right next one leadership what is really leadership there are two ways to show leadership leadership according to me is things that you have done over and above what was expected of you right that's the way i look at it so i had my circle of influence okay so this was my um let me see if my drawing is this is what my circle of influence was okay this is these are the things that i could influence but actually i stretched it i went and i did things that i was not expected to do either at work or outside of work that's really what i would consider as leadership so let's look at some example maybe at work you volunteered okay for a program uh you know maybe you independently drove a project maybe you bought in some kind of an innovation maybe you guys were doing it in a particular way you walked in and you said hey why don't we change processes you actually took that initiative spoke to management drove that change correct maybe you know you also took on extra tasks of team management so now you are not just responsible for your work but you are also responsible for work of others correct which may include mentoring and training new recruits maybe it was a new form team and as part of this new form team you took up the onus to say well i see this as a problem why don't i raise it to the management maybe team morale was the problem so you basically went up to team management and said well this looks to be a very difficult project we just have four months the team is expected to long work long hours i see motivation as a problem can we do something so the team management and you discussed and you decided that every friday you guys would go out for lunch just as a team building that is a small initiative but you took that initiative right so what we are really looking at is all these small things that you did over and above work correct so the idea is that you need to also focus on these things you need to focus on um, how you were able to contribute to the company over and above your job description okay the second part outside of work see you know one of the mistakes that people do is people think uh, i have to work for an ngo right that is what will help build my profile you couldn't be further from the truth see first of all you have to understand that in india there is no culture of working for ngos whereas in us whereas in other countries what happens is that you have this culture where people essentially um, you know especially as part of the church part of their community uh, in the us and all that they actually go out and work correct 
but you are not in those countries you work you are in india where you probably spend 2 hours in traffic every day okay so don't try to build this non profit experience in fact if you build this non profit experience just for the sake of it trust me it will show in your application it will just look ugly that suddenly in february this guy got interested in an ngo did this for february march april may june uh, july and in august in his applications he is talking about how he saved the world okay don't do that um one thing that i've also seen is people end up talking about things like uh, you know monetary donations i've actually had people do this they said oh i'm sponsoring a girl child and i said well great uh, who's this girl and you know how do you mentor her they said no 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 i pay 200 rupees every month sip okay that goes towards this ngo that is well think about it man that's really not going to be seen as leadership correct what you could do instead okay is using my skills correct can i help people maybe um, you know you uh, run your own blog maybe you are very passionate about something and uh, you decided to i know i had a student um, three of his friends they started this uh, you know website on uh, football and this is football in india correct uh, kind of niche area so they were you know kind of uh, having this it was a pretty popular uh, website uh, got a lot of traction um, so when you write in your resume that hey you know what i am by the way the administrator for this website which has you know 10 lakh visitors a month that is a big deal correct in fact some of them run fan pages right on facebook i don't know if facebook really has the fan page concept anymore but uh, maybe you run the fan page for something uh, maybe you write blogs maybe you're good at finance and you help account maintain accounts for ngos correct see wherever my skill is helpful i'll give a couple of more examples one of the students had written that everything that i wanted to know about management i learnt it by managing the ganesh pandal in my um, locality for one year he said that particular year everything that could have gone wrong went wrong it rained okay the idol was not delivered in time correct during the aarti we had you know issues uh, there were problem with financial mismanagement he said you know that 5 6 days of managing it was just you know just killed me but that also taught me that you know about something about myself as to what kind of leader i was there were people who have written about the fact that they were uh, you know uh, the treasurer in their uh, apartment uh, you know owners association so in some owners association they said i was a treasurer one year i was the go to guy correct and i basically you know uh, learned a lot about managing uh, various stakeholders so whatever you do correct you have to pitch it in a proper way so again coming back to what you can do in the next 6 months try to think about it okay try to think maybe you have a friend who is running a, a a startup can you go and volunteer for him correct can you give your time for him right uh let me give some more examples over here okay um by the way i have a lot of people raising hands i have no clue <laughs> what to do when you raise your hand okay uh so just going on this yeah so just going on this um you know what you can do for the next 6 months sunil kulkarni i think you're pressing some button i got like 10 of the request thank you <laughs> so uh what i see is a lot of people this is one thing that uh, they actually uh, need to focus on correct so in the next 6 months what i would suggest is uh, academics you can work on gmat okay work experience you can't really do too much but try to showcase something that shows career progression okay but leadership this is something that you can really think of there are a lot of things that you can brainstorm on okay but uh, i would suggest that take the time out this week so maybe this weekend um sit back think just one one other advice that i have over here is pick something that you're passionate about okay don't pick something that you just want to do it for the sake of a b school right that's the worst thing that you can do to yourself correct because not only would you end up doing something for the heck of it there is no guarantee you're going to get into a b school right so you want to do something that really 
is stuff that encourages you to persevere, you know, continue doing uh, for a longer time, not just for B school. In fact, the unfortunate thing is, you know, that a lot of your other applicants will be embellishing things, will be writing fake stories. Trust me, if you write a fake story, the chances of being caught in the interview or in the application are very high. Correct. So don't fake it. Don't try to say something that you're not. Okay. Hey, um, I'll just look at the questions. Yeah, again, I expected a lot of questions like this. I will not be uh, able to answer questions like, you know, um, you are part of a political party. Great. That comes under leadership. Okay. Okay. So YLP versus work experience. I don't think there is a... Um, Okay, good question. Shailesh had a good question. See, I correct, not just to you. Uh, so the question was, how do I really show that I did it? I was a treasurer in my apartment complex. Okay, how do I know that nobody is giving me a certificate for it? Correct. Well, the one way in which you can do this is by actually going ahead and talking about it in your application. Maybe in your interview, that topic comes up and people say, hey, can you tell me what is the biggest challenge that you faced last year and how did you overcome it? They are looking at your body language. They are looking at the way you speak. They are looking at a lot of other clues. So if you think that you can fake it, trust me, you will not. Okay. So. Okay. So Pratik, uh, humanities background doesn't matter. See, that's the point. You get a St. Stephen's BA economics graduate, man. I will hold him in higher regard than an engineer, correct? Because it's so damn hard to get into St. Stephen's, correct, in humanities, then to probably get into IITs. I'm, I'm being honest, correct? So don't, don't worry on that. On-site experience will work, will help. Yeah, why not? International experience. MIM require GMAT? Yeah, they require GMAT. They also require GRE. Okay, I'm going to go through the 12 questions. Can you example of a good profile of an engineer? See, again, Anubhav, you're asking a very generic question, right? Good profile, I've already told you, 9.8 CGPA, IIT Delhi, worked in Google for three years, had three patents to his name. After three years, he started his own company, which was acquired by, uh, you know, another larger firm for, uh, you know, $100 million, has a 780 on the GMAT. He is a kind of guy that Harvard, Wharton, Stanford, all of them would fight. Okay. They would give him a probably a hundred percent scholarship, though he doesn't need that money. Okay. To get in. So don't look at this good profile, bad profile. Look at your profile because end of the day, you're not comparing your profile with others. So one mistake that, you know, people tend to do is they think, Are, mera koi ideal profile chahiye. no, your profile to a large extent cannot change. 90% of that profile is already there. What we are looking at is the 10%. How do I take my 90% that is fixed, but that 10% variable, how do I maximize that 10% variable? Correct? That's really uh, what you're looking at. Extracurricular doing during college doesn't really matter, especially if you have more than two years experience. Three years experience, two different companies, fine. Okay. See, Aditya, this is, uh, when to start GMAT prep started as soon as possible. Uh, NSS during bachelor's, yeah, sure, why not? MTech give weightage, yeah. So again, there are people asking the same question. Like, for example, is YLP better or uh, MBA after experience? I'm not, I don't think that's really a question that anybody can answer. If you think you are in third year college, you got a great GMAT score, go ahead and apply. Uh, get an admit. Uh, two years later, let's see if you want to join a B school or you may end up joining a B school in the US, correct? So that's something up to you. Uh, different experience. And so I didn't get the question. Um, LinkedIn profile and experience. How did it matter, man? Anybody, I can, any, I can give recommendation to anyone on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, I would regard it as very low value. Foreign MBA or a foreign master's, does it help? Definitely it helps. International experience per se works. Okay. Um, so anonymous people asking two complex questions about your profile. Okay. Um, I won't be able to answer. So if I'm not answering your question, please don't ask it again because um, 
I'm not going to be answering it again as well. MTech has weightage, yeah, kind of. Better than, I mean, you have MTech, they will see. What did you do in MTech? Undergrad experience, uh, placement coordinator, secretary and all that. See, again, if you have uh, three, four years, the other, other important thing about this is also remember that you don't want something that is dated, correct? So if you are such a, you know, uh, uh, start in college time, they would expect that you would have continued that even during work, correct? So for that reason, you know, uh, a lot of people are going to look at your uh, current, you know, involvement in extracurriculars rather than, uh, you know, what happened this. What's the format of a profile? I don't know what it means. So again, Pratima Sutar and all that, you are asking the same question again, again, please uh, request you for the sake of others to kind of please, you know, uh, ask if, I've, if I'm going to answer it, uh, please. <clears throat> International experience is, is considered good. Why not? Various leadership in undergrad, I told you undergrad is not that big a deal. Does MTech have a profile? I've already answered it. ROI from two complex a question, Satyajit, for today's session. Two year Teach for India experience. Yeah, Teach for India, good uh, weightage. Yeah, Bhavik, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay. So, unfortunately, I'm not going to be taking any more questions. Let me just go ahead and complete the webinar. Okay. Because it just becomes. See, what I wanted was to help you answer a few generic questions. But I think what really happened is, you know, a lot of people asking very specific questions. Really sorry about it. Apologize, but I would not be able to get into that level of depth. Okay, so let me just go ahead and wrap up the webinar with the other two points that I had for um, today. Okay, next one diversity. What they are looking at is what story does this person bring to the table? Okay, what are the demographics? Okay, each country has a particular, you could call it reservation. Okay, that they have a reservation quota saying that if you come from Haiti, you come from the Dominican Republic. How many people are from Dominican Republic applying to a B school? Not many. So that ways your country becomes an advantage for you. I don't need to say this. India and China are not advantageous because there are so many people applying from India that that's something that is definitely not going to work in your favor. Second thing, gender. All things being equal, if there is a male candidate and a female candidate applying to the same program, the female candidate will get a, will get preference over a male candidate. Simple as that. Look at today's webinar. Out of 100 people, uh, let me just ask this. How many women do we have? Can you just uh, type it over here? The number of women. Not many. No one. I thought there were a few. Okay. Usha. Right. Aishwarya. Nancy. See, you look at it. Udita. There are not many. Correct. 20 person, maybe 10 person, 15 person. Now what happens is that all of you girls, when you are applying to a B school, the same thing happens. Out of every 100 applicants, typically 20% are women and 80% happen to be men. So for no other reason, but for the fact that you end up, you know, being a woman, you have a slight advantage, correct? So good news for women, men don't, don't worry, don't, Please don't consider a gender change operation, okay? Please, uh, there are enough men who get into B schools, but I just wanted to tell you something that, you know, I think you should know. Industry. So someone asked me earlier saying that I'm coming from computer design. See, I'll tell you what are the typical industries that are overrepresented, okay? If you are from any one of these industries, you typically are in a overrepresented category. You are from technology, you are from manufacturing, you are from sales and business development, any function doesn't, any industry doesn't matter. You are from finance, okay? So manufacturing by the way includes operations, right? Uh, 
uh, or you are from consulting if any one of you is from these five broad categories you are from a over represented category now within finance you could say but arun within finance i do something very specific great i am not saying that being in this five categories will get you a rejection in fact i'll tell you 95% of people in any b school will be from such a background correct so this is not like to say that you will not get into a b school if you come from this background what i really want to say is there are enough and more people with this kind of background applying to a b school in fact if you are from a very weird background let us say you are a painter i would say you have a bigger problem because though there are not many painters applying to a b school there is a good reason why painters are not applying to a b school right what the hell does a painter have to do with b school so very hard to make a connect but you could say well i am a painter i understand art and i want to get into starting my own business which is which is into art evaluation which will be able to use art as a different asset class and where people can actually invest in art maybe that is your plan maybe being a painter then becomes a tremendous advantage correct so my point is if you are coming from an underprivileged background or a not underprivileged underrepresented background there is a chance that not many people are going to a b school because they don't have a reason i have had dentists i have had people from military background i have had people who are lawyers so i do get a mix of people from various industries but just remember that these are the top 5 over represented ones correct you can't really do much if you are let's say indian it and mail correct that's like you know that's sorry but that's really what it is but here is one thing that b schools really look for see when i told you about sitting in that classroom and i told you about you know listening to everyone one other thing that b schools also look for is what is your personal story where did you grow up did you come from a vernacular medium did you struggle during graduation to learn english correct did you overcome any kind of physical handicap maybe used to stammer and stutter and that led to under confidence and i want to learn the journey of how you are able to overcome that correct so i want to know more about you as a person so diversity over here can actually be played so you could be indian it and from let's say technology but you could end up telling me a story that makes me think no this person perhaps is a little different from others correct so very important that you think about those kind of stories in your profile is this person having any unique hobby is there any interest or skill that gives me a glimpse about this person correct it is not leadership to know how to play the guitar but if there is a person who comes in saying that every weekend i was actually jamming with my friends i have a rock band that you know i've been playing uh, from the time i was in college that would interest me correct because this person brings something different to the table he is not unidimensional correct he has a lot more to contribute in terms of you know a, a variety of different things correct it's 9 o'clock here are a bunch of things that you could actually show as your passion right maybe you started a meetup group for people with common interests right maybe you join a band or a theater group maybe you create a book club maybe you part you maybe you are a you are a great uh, cricketer uh, when you were in college and now you actually have a camp and you help uh, people uh, you know train kids to play cricket maybe and i know this okay there was a student who used to write movie reviews okay and i'm telling you it's a true story he applied to uh, kelly indiana uh, which is a you know a 20 rank school in the us um, average gmat score i think about 670 or something but here is a deal um, he was a huge movie buff okay so what happened in the interview is the interviewer asked saying uh, i see that you are interested in movies so you know can you tell me more about it and he said i have seen all the movies in the imdb top 100 okay that's like 100 movies right um and he said great so you know what's your favorite then he said oh i like this movie and it was about this iranian director and uh, 
the interviewer got interested because he also had seen a movie from this Iranian director and he was also a big movie buff. So he started saying, ah, you know, it sounds interesting. What are the movies? This guy said, I've seen the, this movie. The interviewer said, well, I didn't see that movie, you know, sounds interesting. He said, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the name of the movie. And so anyways, the interview got over. After the interview, he wrote a thank you note saying, you know, thank you, blah, blah, blah. Here is the name of the movie that I was talking about. You should see it. Then later he came and said, uh, Arun, I don't know, yaar, uh, MBA interview mein, you know, asking about movies and Mathosko movie, movie ka bhi naam bata diya, you know, uh, would that be taken positively? I said, look, as long as it's your passion and, uh, you know, he asked you something about it, there is no need to worry. Surely he actually got a substantial scholarship and an admit to the school. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is that they're re really looking at something different about you. Now, it doesn't mean that after this webinar, you go and start watching movies, okay? So don't say I'm now an expert in Netflix, right? Or an expert in Amazon Prime. I've seen all the, you know, programs. But it has to be something that is interesting, correct? Yeah, and starting a blog and publicizing it. Uh, one of my students was a Wikipedia editor, which meant that, you know, he would actually be on Wikipedia uh, and he was like one of those, they have this internal rating system. So he was one of the senior editors. And uh, whenever there was anything that is happening in a particular topic, he would immediately go and he would update the page. Correct. These are things that make you interesting. Right. So I would say, don't look at B-School admissions. Forget that. Ask yourself, what is it that I have done to make myself interesting? Okay. This is not about MBA, it's about yourself, it's your life, correct? So try to pick something that you're really interested in, passionate about, and just pursue it, MBA or no MBA, okay? Which brings us to the last point, which is, uh, or sorry, the fourth point, which is personality. So I'm just gonna pick something that, you know, uh, was mentioned by someone at ISB, which is, we and recruiters want people who can communicate effectively and who are well-grounded. Okay, what we are really looking at is they are looking at communication, they are looking at clarity, and they are looking at character, right? How well are you able to communicate what you want to say? The last thing they want is someone who is not able to, um, you know, is not able to think through, is not able to articulate things. You will not find a single person in a top school. You may have people who may have different accent. Don't worry. Accent is not a problem. Uh, maybe while talking a couple of times, you do make these small errors. That's okay. What they are looking at is this person able to passionately defend what he's saying. Right? So your essays go a long way in helping me understand your communication. I want to see your recommenders. I want to see what they say. Most importantly, you may be a paper tiger. You may have had help from other people to help in your application essays. But the rubber meets the road when you come in for the interview. When I see that person sitting in front of me, I'm just looking at it saying, well, he seems to have all these accomplishments. He seems to have all these accolades and all these bouquets that he is carrying in his, um, you know, uh, resume, but the person who's sitting in front of me, is this a person that I want in my B school? Correct. So, you know, it's very important. So I've had a lot of people who have really struggled with it. I think this is one area that you can work on, right? In case you feel this is an error, this is a possible area of improvement. Correct. Uh, communication, obviously speaking well, clarity is structuring your thoughts. Correct. Right now, just to give an example, I've been speaking nonstop almost for about more than an hour and a half, right? Uh, it has to be structured. This PPT, I would have started and said, oh, these schools look for achievers. It couldn't have helped you. I gave you five points. Within each five points, I gave you very specific actionable things. So what you need to do is when you communicate, you need to communicate with that structured thought process. Okay, so that is something that I think you can start reading. There is plenty of literature out on the internet. I don't need to tell you, but I think this is something that you need to do, not just because you want to get into a B school. Trust me, in the B school and after B school, see, once you have decided that management is the career path that you have chosen, right? Really, you should be focusing 
on honing your communication and your personality. Very, very important. Okay. Last point, goal clarity. As I said, is this a person who will meet his goal? Is this a person who will eventually achieve what he wants in life? Okay. By the way, are all of you able to hear my voice? Yeah, good. So goal clarity is about really, you know, uh, this thing. Do you know where you want to go? What is your short term goal? You know, I was, it's so bizarre that, you know, sometimes, so I got a MB application for ISB just a couple of um, weeks ago, Jan 15th was the deadline. And um, I was just reading this application, you know, story. Um, one of the questions that ISB has is, where do you see yourself after graduating from Indian School of Business? And he says, I see myself, uh, you know, being a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Now tell me how many ISB graduates end up becoming CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, correct? So the whole idea is that, you know, you want to pick something that is realistic. You want to pick something that uh, leverages your background. So you don't want to just jump into something that you've never done before. You know, I've had a lot of guys saying, I am from IT, but I want to get into finance. Why finance? Because investment banks pay a lot. Well, investment banks pay a lot, but why would you get into finance? Well, apart from money, there is no reason. If there is no reason apart from money, that's a career path you should not choose. Trust me, the whole money glamour aspect will wear off very quickly. What you're stuck with is a career, right? You are doing an MBA not to get a job. You are doing an MBA to have a career for yourself, correct? So make sure that you're realistic. Can you tell me what is your dream company? Can you tell me what will be your title over there? Okay. Once you're able to figure out what is your dream company and your title, go to LinkedIn and see who are the people working today in that company and today carry that title. Look at their career paths. See what is it that they have done? What are the MBA programs they went to? Correct. So you need to plan this very well. But where you want to go, unless and until you are able to tell me the name of the company and the title, you do not have clarity. Second thing, why do you want to go there? As I said earlier, you need to show me your passion, correct? You need to tell me a real reason why you want to do that, right? So uh, I'll just give an example. One of my students, again, uh, he had written about how he wants to get into a product. And he said, today I have realized that everything that we do has fundamentally changed because of this small screen that we hold in our hands, the mobile phone. I feel I'm privileged to be part of this generation where one app put on the store, on the app store, can instantly be available to billions of people all over the globe. Never before in human history has anyone got that opportunity. I have that opportunity, correct? So you need to be very clear, what is it? What is your passion, right? Why are you the best person to reach? As I said earlier, right? You have to align it to your background, correct? Don't think B school is this one year or two years, you know, as they say, all your previous pop will be washed off, okay? That is not going to happen. You are going to be still stuck with what you did before MBA because when you're going for the interview, correct? Um, just like a tech company looking for a, product management role will not look at a humanities background, correct? Similarly, finance guy will not look at a guy from a tech background just because he says he has no background. So you need to understand, right? Why are you the best person? Why you want an MBA to get there? Why can't you get there by your own? Why don't you take these bunch of these online courses? Very much, you have the knowledge that you need. Why do you want an MBA? You need to be very clear about these questions. Correct? Unless and until you're able to answer these questions, it's going to be very hard because sooner than later, correct, these are questions that are going to come back to haunt you. So it's good that you use this as an opportunity the next six months, correct? To really ask yourself this question. Why do you want to do an MBA from XYZ? So a lot of people say my dream school is, uh, I don't know, is Harvard, Stanford. Why is that your dream school, right? There has to be a good reason. There has to be a good rationale for it. 
right? So make sure that you do all that research, correct? And why do you want to go there now? The key aspect to focus on over here is the word now. Why didn't you apply to a B school last year? Ah, oh, yeah. This is the point you need to understand. Why didn't you apply last year? Why don't you apply next year? Why don't you wait one more year? People who ask this question, right? I have two years experience, one year experience. Sure, you need to be able to justify the B school that with one year or two years, I have the clarity to, you know, of what I want in life that I don't want to work for more years. But I already have the clarity and I already know that an MBA is required for me to reach my goal. Why should I work for two more years in a job that I really don't feel passionate about? Correct? So, you know, and again, people with 20 years experience, you know, even for you, answering the now is even harder. 12 years experience, 15 years experience, 18 years experience, whatever your number of years experience are. Correct? It's very important for you to answer this and say that, okay, maybe there was a point in my career when things were moving so fast that I really did not have time to sit back and think. I've reached a level in my career where I sat back and I thought about it and I realized that what got me here will not get me there. You get what I'm saying? What got me to being a project manager will not get me to head, uh, let's say, the APAC business of my company. For that, I need a completely radically different tool set, which is what I hope to get from an MBA. So you need to be very convincing in your answers. Correct? All right. So that's pretty much what I had. Uh, and, uh, you know, we had, a, you know, Q&A slot, but we are already about 13 minutes off um, the time. And again, I would like to apologize because I really wished I could have answered all your questions, but uh, make sure that you reach out to us. We are more than glad to help answer each and every question. Correct. Go ahead, fill out the profile evaluation form. Correct. Someone will reach out to you. There will be a specific uh, call where we would go into each point in your profile. Answer all the questions patiently. So please don't worry. I hope this webinar was useful, um, you know, because my objective was to kind of help you with some actionable tips just to give you a quick recap of what we did so far so that, you know, uh, post this, you kind of have a sense of what you need to do. Okay. Um, I'm just going to pull it up over here. Uh, yeah. So let me just put it up over here. First thing uh, is, as I mentioned, um, we are going to look at ACATS. So to a large extent, uh, so first one is going to be ACATS. To a large extent, your GMAT is going to play a role over here. Um, WorkX, try to, try to get some increased, um, you know, roles and responsibilities within your company. Uh, leadership, uh, try to see if there are uh, opportunities both at work and uh, outside of work that uh, you would like to kind of, you know, contribute to. Um, your overall personality, uh, I would say, try to see if there is any hobby that you think you can highlight anything about your past that you think uh, would make an interesting this. And lastly, try to make sure that you have, um, you know, the goals, you have answers, you know, to the, you know, important questions. As long as you're able to do this over the next four or five months, um, you know, I think you got it covered for a B school. All right. Thanks a lot for your time. And uh, I know it's time for dinner. It's time for dinner for me too. Okay, and I probably need to rest my throat, <laughs> but I'm used to this. I am used to talking and I'm um, very happy uh, if this uh, webinar was useful uh, because that's one thing that, you know, we would like to do. We like to actually help students meet their goals. All right. Thanks a lot. Good night. And uh, for those who are uh, in US, have a great rest of the day. Thank you.